Finally, in this little sequence, let's do a calculation associated with the application of Kirchhoff's equation. There it is, Kirchhoff's equation there with the definition, rather long definition of CP. Much easier just to say that we'll just add up the CPs of the products, add up the CPs of the reactants, subtract the two. So 300 Kelvin, <coughs> delta H minus 9, I'm going to put 4 for this reaction, and 2, 3H2 goes to 2 and H3. Now I'm giving you the molar specific heats, and these are the CPs for N2, H2, and NH3. Uh, that calculate the value for delta H at 800. Well, first of all, let's calculate what the delta CP is. So the products, we got 2 and H3, so it's 2 times the CP of NH3. The reactants, we got an N2 and 3H2, so it's the CP of N2 plus 3 times the CP of H2. Pop all those in, and we get delta CP minus 45.3 joules per Kelvin. Could put in the per mole, but I don't particularly like that because we've already sort of sorted out all the nasty little moles in there. Okay, so just 45.3 joules per Kelvin associated with this equation as written. Now let's think about Kirchhoff's equation. Delta HT1 minus 92.4 kilojoules, told you that there. Delta CP just worked it out, minus 45.3 joules per Kelvin there, times the change in temperature, 800 minus 300. And I hope at this point you appreciate that we've got a unit issue, kilojoules in one, joules in the other. Convert everything to kilojoules, pop it into our calculators, and the new delta H minus 115.1 kilojoules. So with this rudimentary calculation, increase the temperature pretty significantly, 500 Kelvin, and you do increase delta H from minus 92.4 to minus 115.1. My physical chemistry friends would freak out at me applying that to such a large temperature change, but I wanted you to see the effect of it. What, of course, we should have done was all kinds of nasty integrations, etc. But I'll leave that for you to do in a later course.